So friends, let us talk on generation of high voltage. We know that we have a potential transformer. This potential transformer can be used to step up the voltage. This category is available for single phase as well as for three phase. So with the help of this step up transformer, the voltage can be increased to the required level in single phase and three phase so that the test specimen can be tested. So that that particular transformer can be called as a test transformer. But many a times what happens, that particular transformer is not sufficient to generate the required level of voltage. Yes, this transformer is used for the purpose of transmission and distribution. So whatever the testing equipments which are there on those the transmission distribution networks can be tested with the help of this particular transformer. But this is one of the choice of having the testing transformer. Even though most of the equipments on three phase system, a single phase transformer which operates at power frequency is the most common from HVAC testing equipment. That is high voltage alternating current testing equipment. This test transformer normally used for the purpose to have a low power rating, but high voltage ratings. These transformers are mainly used for short time test on high voltage equipments. The current required for these tests on various equipments are like if we are testing the insulator, circuit breaker, bushings, instrument transformers, then the required level of current is 0.1 to 0.5 ampere. So this is what the current required for these tests on various equipment. Then power transformer, high voltage capacitors, cables, or even power transformers, high voltage capacitors, it is 0.5 to 1 ampere. And for cables, it is 1 ampere and above. The design of this test transformer is similar to a potential transformer, which I said, potential transformer that is used for the measurement of voltage and power in transmission lines. So potential transformer is definitely the instrument transformer, is definitely the instrument transformer. But for the testing purpose, like in instrument transformer, the voltage is stepped down. The voltage is stepped down. But in case of testing specimen, the voltage is stepped up. That is what the difference in these two transformers. The flux density chosen is low so that it doesn't draw a large magnetizing current. Otherwise, that may saturate the core with the high harmonics. So this is what the generating methods. So this is one of the method of using a test transformer for the testing of insulating material. Now we are going to discuss the first method called as cascaded transformer. Cascaded transformer. So whenever we need high voltage, a cascaded transformer can be used. So for the voltages higher than 400 kilo volt, it is desired to cascade two or more transformers depending upon the voltage requirement. With this, the weight of the whole unit is subdivided into single units and therefore the transport and erection becomes easier. So instead of carrying a single transformer, if there are Number of transformers cascaded depends on the requirement. Then the weight can be reduced 
the cost can be reduced the transportation cost can be reduced the erection cost can be reduced the transportation and erection becomes easier so with this the transformer cost and voltage that also can be reduced now here the heavy insulation is required in single stage transformer for high voltage exceeding 345 kilovolt it is found that the cost of insulation for such voltage for single unit becomes proportional to square of operating voltage so this relation is very very important the cost of insulation for the voltages of say 345 kilovolt 400 kilovolt for a single unit becomes proportional to square of operating voltage now this figure shows the basic scheme for cascading three transformers here there is a cascading of three transformers the primary of the first stage so this is your first stage this is your first stage second stage third stage this dotted line is indicating the tanks these are nothing but the tanks which are insulated and connected to ground then we have primary winding and secondary winding in each stage so if i say this is your first stage then this is the primary winding of first stage and secondary winding of first stage so this particular primary winding of this first stage is connected to the low voltage supply it is the low voltage supply as we are generating high voltage so therefore this voltage is low a voltage is available across the secondary of this transformer now the voltage is available on this secondary side the tertiary winding means this winding so this is the tertiary winding the tertiary winding that is excitation winding of first stage has the same number of turns as the primary winding so the number of stages of these two windings are same number of windings of these two stages are same and feeds the primary of the second stage so as this primary winding is same therefore this primary is also having same number of turns number of winding and that feeds the energy to the primary winding of second stage so this is your second stage you can see this is your second stage and the second stage primary winding this is your second stage primary winding now if this is second stage primary winding this is second stage secondary winding the potential of tertiary is fixed to the potential v so it means the voltage which is available here is v across primary winding is v the potential of tertiary is fixed to the potential v of the secondary winding as shown in the figure the secondary winding of the second stage transformer it means this one is connected in series with the secondary winding of the first stage so whatever the voltage which is induced on this side is if it is say v or v2 this side is say v or v2 the total voltage on the secondary side as connected in series the total voltage becomes v plus this v it is equal to 2v so you can see here the voltage is mentioned so the total voltage becomes 2v with respect to the common terminal so we know the function of a transformer where it induces voltage on the secondary side so this primary winding of first stage has a low voltage supply induces voltage on the other side the voltage on this secondary side of the winding of first stage is v now the secondary winding induces wind emf that is voltage on the tertiary winding as the number of turns of this tertiary winding and primary winding on first stage is same so therefore this winding has the same voltage as of the primary winding of the first stage now the same voltage is passed to the primary winding of second stage accordingly 
it induces high voltage on the other side that is secondary side of the second stage the number of turns of this secondary winding of second stage and number of turns of the secondary winding of the first stage is same and the, therefore the voltages are same the voltage induced the magnitude voltage is same and hence the total voltage is twice v now the similar concept is followed for the third stage now what happens this secondary winding of second stage induces emf that is voltage on tertiary winding of second stage which is cascaded to the primary winding of third stage and again induces the voltage across the secondary winding of third stage now the total voltage becomes v of secondary of first stage v of secondary of second stage and v of secondary of third stage hence the total voltage becomes 3v so that voltage will be 2v as i said and is available between the ground and the terminal of the secondary of the secondary stage transformer similarly stage number 3 this one stage is connected in series with the second stage transformer with this the output voltage between ground and the third stage transformer that is secondary is 3v as i said it becomes 3v now it is to be noted that the individual stages except the uppermost must have three winding transformers right so you can see this is the uppermost it has only two windings this is the last stage as we are cascading three transformer if we are cascading four transformer if we are considering four transformers then fourth transformer will have only two windings primary and secondary but rest of the three will have three windings if we have five transformers cascaded then fifth transformer that is fifth stage will have two windings fifth stage will have two windings but from first to fourth will have the three windings in the stages that is primary secondary and tertiary so the uppermost however will be a two winding transformer now figure shows a metal tank construction of transformers and the secondary winding is not divided here the low voltage terminal of the secondary winding is connected to the tank the tank of stage 1 transformer is earth the tanks of stage 2 and stage 3 transformers have potential of v and 2v respectively above earth and therefore these must be insulated from the earth with suitable solid insulation though high tension bushings ht bushings the leads from the tertiary winding and the high voltage winding are brought out to be connected to the next stage transformer the main disadvantage of this cascading the transformers is that the lower stages of the primaries of the transformers are loaded more as compared with the upper stage the loading of various windings is indicated by p that is shown in the figure that is indicated by p so secondary winding of first stage second stage and third stage as p for three stage transformer the total output va that is volt ampere will be 3 times va or 3 times v into i at there are three stages so the total power will be of 3p the total power will be of 3p as i said this particular side is more loaded so therefore that is that has 3p so therefore each of the transformer winding of the transformer would carry a current of i is equal to p upon v so this will carry i is equal to p upon v that is given current is equal to power upon voltage whatever the voltage which is induced on that so that based on that we get the flow of current and p is equal to v into i and therefore i is equal to p upon v i is equal to p upon v the primary winding of stage 3 transformer is loaded with p and so also the tertiary winding of second stage transformer the primary winding of stage 3 transformer so this is p and therefore the tertiary winding of the 
stage 2 is p therefore the primary of second stage transformer would be loaded with twice p so the total power is becomes twice p why twice p because this p of tertiary winding and this p of secondary winding the total power is twice p if this winding of second stage primary winding of second stage is twice p hence the tertiary winding of stage 2 the stage 1 tertiary winding of stage 1 has 2p now if tertiary winding of stage 1 is 2p secondary winding of stage 1 is p and therefore the total power is 3p on the primary winding of stage 1 so therefore while designing the primaries and tertiaries of these transformers this factor must be taken into consideration the total short circuit impedance of a cascaded transformer from the data for the individual stages can be obtained. So this is all about the cascade or cascaded transformer for the generation of high AC voltage. What is difference in the potential transformer of step up kind and cascaded transformer is in potential transformer there are only two winding primary and secondary. Secondary number of turns and hence the voltage is more than the primary number of turns and hence the voltage. In case of cascaded transformer, there is need to have three windings in n minus one number of stages and nth stage should have only two windings. But the power loading on the lower stages becomes higher, it increases. But the current which is passing through the secondary winding of the transformer in each stage will be same that is i is equal to p upon v so this is what the important point related to this cascaded transformer hope you understood this generation of ac high voltage thank you so much